You're crazy. You're crazy. Man. You're crazy. Hey everyone, how's it going? Darth Shigong here, and welcome to Gaming on the Dark Side. Today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. This is gonna be the first episode of something I like to call Dawn of Theories. And this week, we're going to be taking a look at some Dragon Slayers. So buckle up, and let's ride. Now this weekend, we had our first Dragon Slayer, Zabava. And she's already blowing things up, dude. Um, people are I've seen people taking her at like level 40 and 50 and dropping fully relicked out, prestiged out Hachis. It's insane. All right, guys, so if this is what we've got, I can only imagine what's coming next. Now, since this is a theory video, all these are just basically my ideas, guys. These are just some theories I have and some interesting ideas. So don't obviously take it as um, uh, what's gonna happen. What we'll do though after for sure, man, is check out and see how accurate I was when we're able to compare them to the actual Dragon Slayers that come out. All right, guys, so let's start off. All right, so I have here six different Titans for our Dragon Slayer series that I can see happening. Right now we just had an infiltrator, so we need a berserker, a champion, a guardian, a ranger, and a paladin. But I also put another infiltrator in there, guys, just for fun, and I'll show you guys why a little later. All right, so let's start off with our guardian here. Now I chose Void, because I'm thinking that the next Dragon Slayer that comes out has to balance out, or at least be an attempt to balance out the game. After Zababo came in and just blew it up, Right, so this one here, I got written down as be using Corrupted Horde, and he's gonna stifle attacks like Segment. But I was figuring, why not have a little bit of fun with this and put some thought into it, and let's have some unique new type of playstyles. So this one here is gonna instead of healing like Segment does, in the sense that it has heals random units, this one's gonna actually gonna steal life. It's gonna heal units, and as it steals life, it also increases the health pool of those units. All right, as it defeats them. So the weakness for this Titan, obviously, would be some solo Titans that don't bring a lot of units in because there's less from the lifesteal from. But this guy would be a sticky fighter, especially with that Horde. Those Corrupted Horde, we all know, man, those things just live forever. So if this guy here can not only heal it and increase their health pools are going, you're going to time out. This guy is just going to be timing things out and people are going to be avoiding them like the plague. All right, next up, we've got our Paladin. He's going to be an Earth Paladin. Now, I want to come up with a guy that's going to be kind of a good switch hitter. Something you can use for defending, but also play with attacking. Think of like Ares, right? He was a defender, but I mean, he's also a great attacker. But he's more geared for defense. Now, he's not going to be the best garrison defender, but he'd be great for land defense, right? He'll just be annoying and time consuming to fight. Now, his unique ability will be his Corrupted Goliaths. Now, they'll need to be taken out fast because the only problem with them, or should say the big problem with them, is for every Corrupted Goliath that's on the field, this Titan is gonna gain 100% armor and 100% health. So if he's able to drop five over time, right? They wouldn't just drop all at once, or maybe we could have it where it drops all at once and then you're having to fight those. That would be an interesting way too, to burn those Goliaths down and all. But either way, if they're on the field, he's tough to take down, right? And he's just out there just whapping fools. So, you know, like I said, I just wanna to try to create some real unique play style, something that's different. So we have to come up with different strategies to fight these guys, but they're really relying on those units and the units are relying on them. So it's kind of something, kind of an interplay, right? Just having some fun. So like I said, this guy's our Earth Paladin, our Corrupted um, Goliaths. Should be a pretty interesting one to fight. All right, guys. So next is going to be our Ranger. And I chose Poison for this one. Now, I want to have some fun because I'm a guy that does a lot of just grinding. So I would love to have a fast land attacker. It's great for ping-ponging, right, our PP, and for Conquest. Get in there, get it done quick, and we can move on. So with this one here though, is you know she's just fast. She's got you know she's got panthers out there. She's just whapping things down with her bow, and I mean they're just mowing through stuff, right? However, skill. If we had to want skill, we can make her even more effective. So if you wanted to go past auto attacking, these corrupted panthers get five times flanking damage, right? So if you take more control over the panthers and really move them about the field, you can do some serious damage with them. Um, especially if you can flank or rear attack the um, uh, the opponents, right, guys? So the, the more control you have over your Panthers and keep them alive, the more damage they're going to do. And you can go after some guys with some real hard armor and um, resists with this guy. 
All right, this one was fun to play with here because I like ice. Um, so our champion, he's been ice champion, and I wanted to go like freaking Final Fantasy Dragoon style, right? With a freaking spear, does some cool stuff. But anyways, I want to go back to the old days where we, our champions were just self-boosting beasts, right? However, the twist, right? Because we have to have a twist with things, is that his power is tied to the number of enemy troops on the field, right? So the more troops that are out there, the more damage and armor piercing he has. But as the troops die, he gets weaker and fast, right? It's like exponentially weaker as he kills enemy units. So at that point in time, you need to rely on your the units that you bring to battle to help pick up the slack. Because by the time you've knocked out most of the other guys' units, your champion titan is going to be a wimp, right? So he's just burst attack and then loses power fast. He has like no stamina. So like I said, it makes for this real interesting play style where he's out there just killing as fast as he can, but it doesn't matter if he kills fast or slow, he's gonna get weaker, right? But as long as his units are alive, you have that backup. So you don't wanna go in there by himself. He has to bring his army with him. And like I said, it's just be fun to play. You know, I'm gonna give you a chance to really get some ice in there, dude. And like I said, it's just be awesome to see a freaking Titan out there with that huge ass spear, just <laughs> stabbing things left and right. I'd love it. All right, guys, and here comes one for my players like my boy Vintage, man. He's always talking about having some skill, right? We have to have some high skill Titans from time to time, and this guy is it. He is not an auto attacker at all. This guy is going to require some serious gameplay, but with, if you can play him right, he will be the counter to that horde dragon slayer the guardian one we have right because we're gonna need something to fight that dude and this guy will definitely be it so he's definitely not going to be like a war type attacker for garrisons because he just takes too long to do what he needs to do and we all know that if i'm at war and i'm attacking a garrison and it takes me the full six minutes or whatever it is to fight in that meantime dude i'm getting kicked in the teeth while I, oh, I'm just stuck on one place. So you need something faster than this guy. But this guy for just straight up vengeance. If someone hits you and they've got that guardian on there and you want to come back, this is your dude to make sure they know, hey man, I can whap you too if that's the way you want to go. So that's what this guy is, man. Now, why I say it's going to take a lot of time with him and not only skill is the fact that because of his unique play style. This guy here, you need to keep him alive. And you got to keep him above 50% health for the entire fight, pretty much, right? Because until the very end, he's just kind of like running around. You're just kind of keeping him alive and all that stuff and fighting other units. But at the last 60 seconds of the fight, if this Titan is still alive, he's going to drop five Corrupted Grenadiers. And they're going to drop close to him. And if he's still above 50% health, they're going to get 500% armor piercing on top of all their other buffs. And they're going to be double, right? 100% attack speed. They're going to be just blah, 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 rapid fire hitting stuff, man. So you want to have this guy go back in, gather up all of those horde dudes in one spot, and just let those grenadiers do their job. So obviously, you're going to want this guy to be beefy in the sense that he can survive and take a hit. Because you do not want him below 50%. You don't want him dead. Otherwise, he's useless and he won't do much for you. So you're going to be having to take control of him. You're going to be having to take control of your units. You're going to be watching out against who you're fighting because obviously certain things are going to hunt down your Titan faster than other guys. Um, he's a unique one and takes some skill, but it's going to make it fun for those guys that actually want to play the game and not just tap a button, look at something else, and then come back and say, okay, cool, tap a button again and go there, right? That's just straight up grinding. Like I said, I, admit, I do, but that's that. All right, let's move on. All right, and the last one, man, the Infiltrator. I know we already have one, but I want another one. I mean, I'm still holding out hope for a solo physical infiltrator titan you know just like jinshu right i want a titan to go in there and he's physical and he just kicks some butt because i mean that's what i want so that's why i made this guy up now i really want to come up with a unique twist for this one too so for this guy his unique gameplay is that he drops random corrupted physical units so militia spearmen and archers now when i mean random like every 30 seconds it could be militia it could be spearmen it could be archers we have no idea right it's gonna be random but each one that drops gives him a different kind of buff. So for example, if a militia unit drops, then he would get a damage buff. If a spearman drops, he'd get an armor piercing buff. And if an archer drops, because he has to be the meat shield now, he would get armor and health. 
So you have no idea what it's going to be. So relics on this guy would be interesting because you you, you, know, you want to definitely cover your bases, but you also want to leave that room you're hoping, right? So kind of a roll of the dice that he's going to get what he needs depending on who you're attacking. But I mean, he's just going to be out there just slicing and dicing. And like I said, I really, really, really want a solo physical infiltrator. I mean, I love Tengu. I love Jinshu, right? Um, those physical... I mean, like those 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 titans can go out there and just do it on their own. But this guy, I think it'd be fun, and it gives you a chance to play with some corrupted units and just a totally different playstyle. Like I said, I want some unique things, and that's why I came up with this infiltrator. Now, since we're talking about theory crafting, right? We're kind of playing around the ideas. We gotta look at these corrupted units. Now, the only ones we know for sure that have like all their stats out, obviously, right now, are the corrupted storm maidens, and that's why I put that there. As you can see, that they um. Uh, they have way more damage, way more health, and they also get some pretty good elemental resist, but they have reduced armor piercing. So there is a weakness for them. Now, that's what my idea is gonna be for these other ones here, and I want your guys' input. I would love for you guys to comment below and tell me what you think are gonna be kind of like the offsets for these corrupted units when it comes to Panthers and Pikemen and everything else. So let's take a look at the stats for these other dudes. All right. So, when you look at these stats that I got here, guys, I just kind of looked at the difference between a regular unit and a corrupted unit. But I only hit level one, so there might be some other stuff there. I use the DOT database. So, you guys can look there. Yuki already got in most of these things. However, I'm thinking that when the actual units come out, they might still tweak them. So, obviously, I don't think that these numbers are final. But this is what we have so far. Corrupted Horde have about 400% more health, 130% more damage, and they lose all their innate crit. So... What else is going to happen? Are they going to have some other thing going on? They like move faster, slower, hit harder? Not too sure. All right, next comes our Corrupted Panthers. Now, these guys, as far as I can tell, come with about 250% more health and damage, and they also get 10% more crit. But I didn't see any offsets yet, so I'm not too sure. Are they going to be maybe having less armor or something? There has to be something that makes them, they have, they have to have a weakness. Not too sure what it's going to be yet. You guys, let me know what you think. Next, we got our Corrupted Grenadiers. These guys, man, have 900% more damage. At least that's what I could tell from the level one differences, right? And 300% more health. So these guys are definitely going to be hitting stuff hard. And if you play with that one Fire Titan that I put out there, man, we're talking some serious damage. All right, next, move into our Pikemen, guys. These guys, according to the database, have about 480% more health and do 300% more damage. Now, I didn't see anything get taken away from them. So, like I said, once again, we're going to have to kind of wait and see what comes out and how they're going to get, you know, balanced. All right, guys. So, lastly, we have our human troops here. So, militia have about 350% more health and do about 300% more damage. Archers have 450% more health and do 300% more damage. And our spearmen have 330% more health and do 300% more damage. So, I mean, these corrupted units guys are pretty strong and that's why i feel they need to have some kind of offset to balance it out you can't just increase power and not have some kind of weakness that's just crazy and i know that's what the big complaint of people are having right now with this whole the baba thing right and stuff but but I'm, I'm hearing some stuff you know i mean she she definitely loses a lot of troops she doesn't keep them alive and also troop loss is going to be an issue if you're fighting with her so just keep that in mind guys everything has a weakness we just need to find out what it is. All right, guys, we're coming close to the end here, but one of the things I want to cover too are the relics. Now, we have Zababa's relics here because that's all we have so far to kind of look at. And obviously, she buffs those corrupted units that she brings into play. There's a Titan and all that stuff. So obviously, the next set of relics for each of these Titans will also buff their corrupted units and them. Now, once again, guys, I'm asking for your guys' help on this one. It'd be great to see some of your guys' creativity in the comments below. If you guys can come up with some unique relics for the different elements, right? The corrupt, the, you know, the, um, the dragon slayers for poison and earth and fire and physical. And maybe we can come up with some really fun stuff. Um, it's always fun to kind of theory craft, right? And get excited about the game and what they're going to come up with. I mean, I know it's not always what we're hoping for, but... It makes it fun and it just kind of gets us all involved so if you guys would just comment below give me some ideas for some relics that would be awesome all right guys well those are pretty much my ideas and some theories on the future dragon slayers i mean i'm probably completely off base who knows i mean we are i mean i'm pretty much we already know 
they already have them probably designed and they're working out the balance issues and all that stuff, but who knows? I mean, I would just like to see that this whole Sababa thing that has blown up the meta for us is just kind of a sign of things to come that these guys are going to put them things out to bring back balance quickly and you know make it fun for us to try to build this up and have counters of things but i also do like the idea of having a little more skill in the game and having some unique play style not just unique um skill sets right or unique relics that just make it easier to auto attack or to be like unbeatable in defense but actually allows you to have more fun on your screen right having to control your units more and be smarter about where you're placing things and how you move stuff and have to pay attention you know it just gives you more into that and that's going to lead into some other thoughts i have for other theory craft videos that will be coming out this is kind of fun for me i mean i really love this game but i'm also i just love to just think about man how can we play with this and how can we make it better and just have more fun and i know you guys are gonna have some ideas i mean i, I watch um your guys you know the, the the live streams and I, I try to watch the videos from all the other YouTubers and everyone has, has such great input and great ideas. And I mean, who knows? I mean, I know Vintage tries to throw stuff out there for the developers and I think as a community, if we can put out the ideas, I don't care if the developers steal my idea and put it in the game, man, and make it more fun for me. It's a win-win, dude, and all. I mean, so, dude, I hope they watch the stuff like this and I hope they're listening to the players and they get ideas. I mean, because it's tough to sit there and try to come up with new stuff all the time and ways to go. So, hey, if we can help them and have more fun in the game, guys, I have some new reason why not to. So, like I said, please, just comment below. Put down your ideas what these Titans are going to look like. What do you want? You know, how, what kind of relics? What do you want to see for weakness for the troops? What kind of new skill-based play do you guys want to see? You know, if you guys have ideas for other theory craft videos you want me to go into, maybe you have some ideas and I can expand upon them and kind of integrate them in, let me know in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to put it in my next video. All right, guys, so thanks a lot. Um, make sure you guys, um, if you can possibly, please like, subscribe. Um, it helps to build up the channel. Um, you guys can see these things coming out. And trust me, I have some really great ideas for some theory videos, so you guys don't want to miss them. And the best way to not miss my videos is by subscribing. So check it out, guys. This is Gaming on the Dark Side, Darth Shigong, and I'll catch you guys in-game.